Let's go. And we will see. And this is your live boy today. Today is Thursday, the 24th day of August 2023, and it's a special day in Christendom. It's the Saint Bartholomew the Apostle Day. And so, if you see a lot of red colors around us to indicate that it's a saint's day because we are sort of commemorating the killing, the lives and the shedding of the blood of these apostles whenever we have these saints days so today is saint bartholomew the apostle day and your lad boy today is discussing servanthood in leadership our reading is going to be from the gospel according to saint luke in the 22nd chapter and our reading will be from the 24th verse let's go it's a brief piece but let's Go together as quickly as possible, all the same. A dispute also arose among them, which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you, rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest and the leader as one who serves. For which is the greater one who sits at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who sits at table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have continued with me in my trials and I have signed to you, as my father assigned to me, a kingdom that you may eat and drink, and at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the gospel of Christ, written to Christ our Lord. Servanthood in leadership. Servanthood is about making yourself available for the service of others to make others more comfortable. Leadership is about making sure that you take a number of people around you into higher realms of satisfaction. So servanthood and leadership in the proper perspective actually go together. But not in the case of the world. In the case of the world, those whom we call ministers, because the word minister is servant, those whom we call ministers are the ones who have like 12 vehicles with sirens blowing around them. They are the ones that get to be at choicey places. They are the ones who get all the allocations of lands. They are the ones who do not have to tighten any belt, and then the rest of the society must start tighten their belts which is not supposed to be what Jesus himself taught. In the Gospel according to St. John in chapter 13, Jesus himself bent down and washed the feet of his disciples. And he said, A new law I have given to you, that you love one another and that you serve. And he had just said it here too, that we are supposed to serve. Now, for us, in different ramifications of where we find ourselves, are we actually serving? 
And this actually also talks to us a lot in the church and especially in the ministry. Do we have the priests actually serving? Or do we have a situation whereby even in the ranking of the priests, you see that he who is preferred and has a higher position than the other wants to lord it over the others, when in actual fact what Jesus did, the, the biggest of all bishops, Lord Jesus Christ, the greatest of all archbishops, Lord Jesus Christ, the most celebrated archdeacon, Lord Jesus Christ, actually served everybody that was around him. He washed their feet. He ministered to their needs. And when they were wondering who is going to take over after you, and in any case, they were wondering at the same time, you're not going to take this kingdom away from the Roman uh, emperors before you depart from us. And Jesus explained to them that his kingdom is not about taking over the thrones of the world. His kingdom was about serving. And so service is what we should also always all look about. You want to be this, you want to be that, you want to be governor. Is it for you to be able to blow siren around? You want to be captain of a class? Is it for you to be able to exercise over authority over them? Or you want to be president of uh, a student's body or the student's union of your higher institution? Is it for service or just that your name may also be on the honors boards? These are the issues that we must all recognize and we must work towards making sure that we exhibit servanthood in leadership. As we commemorate St. Bartholomew's Day today, you must remember that when Jesus was washing all the feet of the disciples, of course he also washed that of St. Bartholomew. And St. Bartholomew, after, also went and became a patron saint of so many things that have to do with service to humanity. And that's why we celebrate him today. Will we be able to celebrate you for any form of service at all? Or yours is just about aggrandizement? Myself, me, and I. That's all you are working about? No, that's not leadership. And that's not the kind of servanthood in leadership that Jesus just preached here. So you need to repent. You need to change your ways. You need to make sure that when you are in leadership, you make the resources available for the generality, generality around you. There is something I observed about my wife and which my mother also used to do. I don't know if it's common to all women. They would eat last and wait for every other person to eat. Although sometimes I don't like it because when we now have so many other people uh, in uh, uh, a gathering or something like that, I will be the second to the last to be served because my wife will be the last to be served and then I, she will make sure that I'm the second to the last person to be served. That servanthood in leadership. Perhaps I should also learn a little more about that from her. Well, that's what Jesus taught us, and that's what you should do. And if you're not doing that, repent. But the greatest repentance that you can have right now is when you give your life to Christ and you move away from a life of sinfulness and just doing everything just to satisfy yourself alone, not loving the, uh, the Lord with all of your heart and not loving your neighbor as yourself. You need to repent from that if you are set for that right now. You say this prayer, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. Just heard about servanthood in leadership. I also want to give that kind of ministry. I want to start by giving my life to you. Forgive me of all the sins of the past as I have been a sinner. As I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior today, please take me as one of yours too. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said that prayer, you need to find a Bible-believing church where you can learn the more about servanthood in leadership. I always recommend that you join us in the Anglican Church of Rokia State Extension, Oshobo. For now, we worship in the Chapel Hall of the Olive Branches, Midland High Schools, Onyiko and Gokyomi Garden Drive, Oroki Estate Extension, Oshobo. Our midweek services are on Tuesday, 5 o'clock in the late afternoon, and our regular Sunday services on Sundays, 9 o'clock in the morning. But we hope very soon that we will move to our permanent site in Woru. So, please, look at... Whatever information you have on the screen right now, or perhaps it had been indicated before or will be indicated after this portion of my fellowship with you, drop something in the bank account details of the Anglican Church or Estate Extension. That is First Bank Account Number 2036601411. Remember, it's First Bank. And God will bless you even as you do that. And for all of us, as we go about the rest 
of our duties today and trying to be sure that we manifest servanthood in leadership. Let's say this prayer. Say, Lord, help me not to run after power and position at the expense of my calling. I pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So go out today. Remember that the best you can render in leadership is service. Servanthood in leadership. And God will bless you even as you do that. Amen.